Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today on A Sister's Trust. I appreciate you taking out the time in your busy schedule because I know as women we can get very busy. But I'm so encouraged that you took time to hang out with me today. Well, this is something that's been on my heart for a long time, being able to share with women all over the world just to find out what the different needs are, how we can grow, how we can help each other, and how we can most of all, importantly, grow spiritually. What I'm doing is I'm going to be sharing on every Monday a different lesson um, that I've had women to write in all over the world, and we're going to go over those lessons together using biblical base and some scriptures. Some of these lessons I pulled out of a book that I've been working on since 1995. I know that's a long time, but I'm finally getting there with the help of my one friend, Michelle Cooper, who I asked to be my editor. So one thing for me, I needed to get that book out of my hands and move to the next level. So some of the stories that we're going to be going on that I have written personally, and I also ask other women to write. So on this page also, I'm going to give out information that you can send in your story, and we could talk about them also. But I want you to feel free that this will be a safe station. When you don't want your name to be mentioned about certain things, we won't do that. But it's not going to always just be reading stories. I want to be able to have different women on here for interviews, like on exercise, cooking, what's going on out there in society. I even have a friend that she she's pretty much a professional shopper on that. Well, I think it's HSN or something. Um, she is. A, I'm gonna have her on here too. So you know, let's just let's just have fun together and just really um. Just work together. One thing I do need for you guys to do is you can help me out by subscribing to my station. And that helps me to keep going on this YouTube. So please share my station with your friends and let's grow together. So um, today's lesson we're going to first talk about is going to be called Forgiveness. And a young lady wrote it. It's from Her name is um, Celia um, Valerio from California. And so we're going to go over her lesson. So each time I go over a lesson, what I'm going to try to do is give you some of the scriptures that it comes from first. That way, at any time that you wanted to pause this video and write them down, and you could be able to go back and study later. I also would like to have a pray, excuse me, a prayer change um, where you can just go on anytime and you just want to have somebody to pray with you. And it's going to be called Let's Pray Together. And I did talk to a few people, a few scary people, So, but we're not going to talk about that. But, you know, guys, I was really thinking about, you know, we all have different fears. But you know what? God has made you to be fabulous who you are. And, you know, we wear so many different hats. And there's so many unique, talented talents that's out there among us as women. And we got to start letting our light shine. So, you know what? First, I'm going to kick it off by... I want to share this um, poem, which I think is really appropriate, because sometimes we don't let our light shine. So hold on. Let's read it together. And it's called Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerfully, powerfully made beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plan small does not serve or shrink far as the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that others won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are all manifest in the glory of God that is within us. 
it is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So I want to share that with you because, you know, it is power in prayer. And sometimes we maybe just need to go back and pray, which is God is the one to give us our most strength. But you know what? Having friends in our lives also gives us strength. You know, give us a lot of strength too. So, and that's another thing. Pick your friends. Think about who's in your atmosphere. Who's encouraging you to be better? So we're not going to get off on that, but that's just something I want to share with you. So our first lesson, like I said, is going to be on forgiveness. So let me start off, first of all, by giving you the scriptures that this is based from, okay? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. Matthew 6 verses 14 through 15, Matthew 7, verses 2 through 5, Romans 12, verse 19, Mark 11, verse 25, Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35, Hebrews 12, verse 15, Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians 6, verse 12, Philippians 2, verse 7. So let's get started. And you know, this was a, a, a pretty lengthy one, but we'll get through it. So I'm going to pretty much read it to you and let you know what the writers think about. And I want you to meditate and see how this fits you and in your life, okay? And at the end, it's areas where you could comment and tell me what you think and, you know, what you thought about everything. Okay, so it lets me know how to mold and how to do things in the future. Okay, let's get started. It says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. The words for this song, although time is overused, are powerful when we look at the words by themselves. They speak for forgiveness, our forgiveness from a loving God who wants a relationship with us. He extends to every being of his earth an invitation to have a relationship with him, to bask in his love to feel his forgiveness, to come out of the waters of baptism and know that whatever we have done, no matter how bad, God has forgiven and forgotten all our sins. Okay. But when the water of baptism had dried off and the newness of our relationship with God and other disciples bear the test of time, Forgiveness is sometimes, excuse me, forgiveness is something we sometimes forget. Both that God has forgiven our sins and that we have that we need to forgive others. We think that we have a justification for being critical of others, looking for all their faults or sins, and holding grudges against them. But we forget that we have been forgiven and God calls us to forgive others. And so she's going to share a little bit about her life. When my husband and I got married in 1998, we had a pretty smooth first couple of years. However, we had a few bumps in the road where we didn't see eye to eye. And they turned into some pretty heated arguments. Along the way, I realized that we felt completely different. I would get upset, speak my mind, and be resolved almost immediately following. He would get upset, close up, and not talk to me for a day or two. 
I thought that I was more spiritual because I didn't hold on to my anger the way he did. But what I didn't realize until a few years into our marriage is that we both come from different family backgrounds and points of view. And we just have different ways of dealing with hurt and disappointment. I will watch my family get upset with each other and then be fine in a minute later, even without apologizing or resolution. And then I'll watch my husband's family get upset with each other and not talk for literally years. Although forgiveness came easy to my family, there was a lack of forgiveness. Whereas my husband's family, they expected the person who done wronged them to grovel and beg for forgiveness before they would even um, complete, complete forgive them or forgiving that person. So her question is, so which person is more godly? Which person is more godly? So think about that out of what I just read. Which person is more godly? I believe that neither was because neither treated forgiveness as God does, nor does the other person through God's eyes. As we Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. God says, from my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, excuse me, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Even if you feel you are the most forgiving person, you know you can still take it higher if you look at others that God, the others the way that God does. I mean, that is a lot to think about. If we start looking at others through the ways that God looks at us and be forgiven as God forgives us, okay? Number one, forgiveness is not an option but a command. That is so true. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15, Jesus says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sin. The first time I looked at this to heart, I felt like my heart was stomped, stomped on. With this scripture, Jesus levels the playing ground. He, in essence, says that none of us is better than the other. Although we might think we have a right to be bitter or angry towards a, another, we don't. If Jesus truly is our Lord, we follow and obey him, then we will obey this command as well. And become, I mean, excuse me, as and become, and because, sorry, we are defensive, another word for prideful. A few minutes later in the same sermon, Jesus says, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be the measure you for you. Okay, so let's think about that. The way that you judge others, you will be judged with the same measure, you know. And the way that you forgive others, you will be also forgiven, you know. We'll let the baggage go. Okay, good point. It says, why do we look at the speck of sawdust, sawdust in our brother's eyes? And pay no attention to the plank in our own eye. That's a question. How can we say to your brother, let me make that, let me take that speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank 
in our own eyes. You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the put the speck of dust from your brother's eye. Matthew 7, verses 2 through 5. There is no option or exception. He does not say if they apologize correctly or if they grovel, gravel, or if they or if the stars align up. We are to forgive others the same way God has forgiven us. We have absolutely no right to hold on to anything against another person, saved or lost. Only God has that right. In Romans chapter 12, verse 19, God says, It is mine to avenge. I will repay. Will we allow God to be God and do for us to be his obedient servant? We need to let God be God and we just be obedient servants, right? That's what she's talking about. It says we need to align our will with Jesus. When he went to the cross, he decided to love us so that we knew um, he was going to the cross. was the only way that we could have a relationship with God. You know, Jesus knew that he had to die. And the only way that we had to have a relationship with God, he had to go to the cross and die for us. Okay? We need to be forgiven just as the others do. Are we better than them? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you you your sin that's mark chapter 11 verse 25 if you put into if you put in a double negative which equals a positive this scripture would read and when you stand praying if you hold anything against anyone don't forgive them so that your father in heaven won't forgive you your sin we do not have an opinion, an option. If we want to be forgiven, we must forgive others. Okay? And that is true, guys. You know, I thought to start off with this forgiveness first because when I think about what goes on in the world, and, you know, I'm not a person that's into the news and stuff, but just really having personal relationships with people, I know that this is a big issue that people got so many things that they hold on to their life that they just not forgive you. And do you know that when you hold on just to um, not to forgive, you give Satan power. And it don't give you the freedom to have the joy and the peace that you deserve. You know, pray about it. You deserve peace and freedom. Okay? Now part two says that Forgiveness is a decision. So we're talking about just taking time just to make a decision to be free. Okay. Forgive. Forgive. It says, I don't know if you are like me, but I used to think that forgiveness was an emotional decision. I had to feel that the person was sorry for what they did or they needed to apologize in a certain manner. For, for me to forgive them. I also had to feel ready to forgive before I was able to truly forgive the, with my heart. Okay. But this isn't what the Bible says. And so she's saying read Matthew chapter 18, 21 through 35. 
In this parable of the unmerciful servant, the master was angry because, I mean, excuse me, the master was angry but chose to be merciful to the servant and forgive him of his debt. That same servant could have chosen to be merciful to his fellow, excuse me, his fellow servant. But he refused and threw him into prison. His master then revoked the mercy he had ex extended. Okay. So in this part, it's talking about how the, mer the, the servant had owed this real big debt to his master. And he was merciful and he forgave him. But the same servant turned around and somebody owed him and he wasn't even merciful and had a nerve to throw this person into prison. Mm. It's something to think about. Okay. You know, it's, you know, how do we treat others as we, um, you know, as God, you know, he forgives us, but we don't take time to forgive others. And, you know, you think about what things you have in your life that you really deserve this, but God, you know, he forgave us. It says, how would you feel if you stood before God on judgment day and he said, you have done everything I asked you of you, but you held on to your anger and bitter feelings towards a family member, a friend, or a boss. And because of that, he cannot let you enter into heaven. Forgiveness is a life or death decision with the implication that affects both our physical lives on earth as well as our eternal salvation. It's a big deal, guys. There have been many numerous studies on bitterness and the effects it has on personal health. It can affect a person's metabolism, immune response, or organ function as well, and cause physical disease. So even though we don't understand God's way, there are reasons behind it, and he knows the, what's best for us both spiritually and physically. Spiritually, it keeps us from giving our hearts. It makes a it makes a bitter you know bitterness. It is um, deceptive. These can all cause us to leave God because we don't see Him anymore, but only ourselves. Forgiveness is not just for the one seeking forgiveness, but also for the person who's giving forgiveness. Even though it feels good to be forgiven, doesn't it feel better when you forgive someone? You know, give them that feeling. There are situations where people we har who have harbored ill feelings towards and may be sorry to see their fault, may not be alive, or may not be accessible to talk to. Are we going to remain angry with them and harbor resentment? If we hold on to these negative feelings and a bitter root would grow in our heart. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, God warns us not to allow any bitter root to grow into our hearts because it would cause trouble and defile many. The Webster Dictionary defines defile as to make unclean, impure, corrupt, or to contaminate. Do not be disillusioned. Do not be disillusioned. Unforgiveness is serious enough that it can rip us away from our relationship with God. Once you have made a decision to forgive someone, you must continue to make the decision to forgive. 
with situations that hurts us deeply, even after we have decided to forgive that person, Satan can tempt us again, unfortunately, to, to, un to unforgive them. Have you ever been in a situation where you forgave someone and thought everything was fine? You were over whatever happened? Then several months down the line, another familiar situation happened with that person or someone else and your feelings are hurt all over again. You tempted to have not just, excuse me, you are tempted to have not just the new hurt, but also dread up the old hurt again. Then all of a sudden, you are upset with that person, even though you had resolved it. Do you see that this is from Satan? In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, Paul warns, Paul warns that our battle isn't against flesh and blood, which is people, but with the rulers and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil. When Satan whispers in our ear, which is in James chapter 4, verse 7, says, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And that's a promise, right? Resist the devil. Let me say this again. Resist the devil. Sometimes I have, I have to tell myself I made the decision to forgive so I am going to continue making that decision. Other times I have to beg God in prayer to take away the bitterness and hurt feelings so that I may find immediately the key is this scripture. Submit. We need to yield or accept God God's way instead of thinking that our feelings or our thoughts are better or a better way. It is becoming more like Jesus having his heart is it is unfind the difference between following God or not or following God or not. And so it's a difference she's saying it's a difference between following God or not. Being like Jesus or not, being saved, being saved, our relationship with God or not. Who has wronged us that is so great that Jesus has not already proven to be forgivable by his own blood? So as you go through your day or week, Make a list of people or situations that has caused you hurt in your past and make a decision to resolve these situations either with the people or with God. So that's a good idea. You know, taking time to sit and make a list. What is the hurt that's going on in your life? What I was noticing as I was trying to read and, and think at the same time you know, sometimes when we don't forgive, it could be people that then passed on. And so, you know, we can never um, make it up to them, right? But we can pray about it and ask God to really work on our heart for the future people. And and pray that some will say that they know that we are sorry. But, you know, make that list and pray about it. Seek advice. Maybe talk to the person. You know, think about who it is. You know, and really pray to God to help you in this area. Um, it says, remember how God sacrificed Jesus so that you can experience his forgiveness and grace. Decide that you will take their heart, putting aside, putting yourself aside, which is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, 
and live a life of forgiveness and grace. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for sharing that with us. I know, guys, it's pretty long, and you know, it's going to be different lengths for different, you know, subjects that we go over. But you know what? It is so important for us to be on the same page or striving to be on the same page, especially biblically. So I give you those scriptures. You know, take time to go back on your own and really um, think about what the lesson that God is trying to tell us. You know, things happen to our lives in our lives at different times. And, you know, God is reaching out to all of us. You know, we have a lot of things to work on. So I'm hoping this is something that we can work on together. So like I said, subscribe to my channel. Feel free, excuse me, feel free to leave comments. This is my first one. So I'm excited. So I hope to, well, I plan to get better as they go. So just let me know what I need to work on and how we can grow and what subjects that we can talk about and pray about. So thank you so much again for joining me on Assistance Trust. Thank you. I love you all. And I look forward to the next Monday on Assisted Trust. So thank you again and have a great day.